A few questions about the classical world championship that you're obviously not playing. I guess it's, you know. It's yeah, I'm, I'm not playing the candidates. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I would say the main reason that I, I'm not playing the Classical World Championship is that I don't enjoy it. It's as simple as yeah, it's as simple as that. I think under the current format with the time control that there is, it's extremely unlikely that I will compete in the Classical World Championship. I've had a great, well, two years now uh, since I played the last World Championship. <laughs> I really don't. Really don't miss it. I really like the life that I have now, both playing from home, but also traveling, playing tournaments, and um, yeah, I simply, simply don't need it. What would it have to look like? What would the format need to be for you to consider going back? I think if you reduced time controls, made it more games, that would be a very good start. What should sort of be the thing that establishes the number one player in the world? What kind of competition could it be? I think the number one player in the world needs to be good at everything, really, uh, at, all, at all formats. Obviously, the rating system usually lags a bit behind, but uh, if you, look at, if you look, look at that over time, that's a pretty good um, indication of um, who, are the, um, uh, who are the best players. And, also, like if you want to know uh, who the best player is, you don't have to look at all the different formats and so on. You can just look for my name. That's also, <laughs> that's a good way to do it. So, what is it that keeps motivating you when you have achieved basically everything? Well, I do like to play chess, uh, so that motivates me. I still enjoy the struggle. I enjoy trying to win. I mean, it's not it's not really a question question for me. Motivation is not. It's not a problem for um, for these events. Obviously, when I feel that I'm doing well, it's 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 easier. But um, right now, I just feel like I've been in an, in a fairly good place mentally for for a while. So it's it's not really a problem at all. But is there anything left for you to accomplish in chess? I think there are always things that I can do better when when I play. Uh, but uh, I haven't thought too much about what goals I want to achieve or anything. Uh, I just like to play. I mean, it's, it's basically as, as simple as that. Yeah. Well, how do you want the world to remember Magnus Carlsen? I want to play for a while still, so I don't want to be remembered anytime soon. <laughs> Looking back on your career, what do you now see as the highlight? Is it a long time ago? Is it quite recent? I have a lot of good memories from chess. One that I often talk about is the Norwegian Under-11 Championship back in 2000, which was really like the first big uh, kids tournament that I that I won. I would say apart from that, you know, Triple Crown the first time was fun. Uh, Vaikanse to 2013, uh, when I posted my best score score there. That's a really good memory because I was just, I don't know, I was just really relaxed. I, I was about to play the candidates tournament, so I didn't have any openings to play or whatever, but I was just not preparing too much for the games, just having fun and, and somehow that, that went really, really well. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, lot of good memories, but I rarely like dwell on the moments or the tournaments that I go well. I usually just look, look forward to the next one. What is your vision for the game of chess going forwards? I do get the chance in February to do something that I've never done before and that really hasn't been done before in chess either, which is to play Fish Random Chess or uh, Freestyle Chess, as, as it's called in this tournament, uh, at the Classical Time Control. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to do that, because Fish Random Chess, I think, it's always been played in rapid time control, which never made a lot of sense to me since you have to think for move one then you lead then you need more time to think and for classical chess there's a lot of theory so you would need less time so it's better to play rapid and blitz there um, instead and that's one of the visions that I have for the future that there will be more um, fish random chess or other variants for classical and that regular chess will be more rapid and blitz which i think it's better better suited for
classical time control for fish random, and that other than that, you envision faster chess, basically. Faster chess is, is, the, is the future. How about the fans? How should they be involved? Well, obviously most chess fans watch uh, tournaments online or on TV, and I think that's the way it's going to continue for for the foreseeable future. I do want to have events as well that look more like chess boxing, where there are a lot of fans. Maybe the players can play with um, noise cancelling headphones so that uh, you know people around can make as much noise as, as they want. So I do think that that's something that could be, be exciting for, for chess as well. Yeah, I, I, I still think most of um, the chess fan experience is going to be, be online, but it, there, there are also ways like the fan zone in Toronto where you can, you can set up exciting possibilities also away from the, um, from the venue. We obviously have to talk a little bit about cheating, which has been a big topic uh, this last year. Um, so what risk do you think that uh, cheating is sort of posing to the game of chess? I think um, because engines are so much better at humans, uh, cheating is, it is sort of a existential risk to, to the game. And I think as, as long as you have this element which can sort of tell you the both the score but also it can a lot of the times just give you the right right answer um yeah that that is that is definitely a big um a big challenge in terms of how many people cheat yeah i don't know um i think between the very top players there's still a pretty um, pretty good level of, of trust that people are, are playing playing fair, um, but I know that at other other levels the trust is considerably considerably less, and it, it is frustrating for for players to to have these thoughts in the in the back of their minds that um, yeah, if somebody you don't know suddenly plays really well, yeah, it inevitably creeps in. I try not to think too much about um, what cheating is going on in Title Tuesday and other events. I simply, yeah, I simply don't know. I think that chess is doing doing quite uh, well uh, in general, uh, but uh, I, but I do think that uh, cheating is like even if if it's not that big a problem right now, and I'm not going like to judge whether it is. It is like. I think it is like the existential threat to to um, to the game, and it's like, and it doesn't really doesn't really go go away. I liked what was being done in Toronto. I think generally the players felt pretty really, felt really safe there, and I know that tournament organizers as well for over the board events are are. Um, Doing, doing better than they were, uh, but um, yeah, still, it's always sort of in the back of, uh, back of your mind. So what are the most effective measures do you think that organizers can do, both OTB and, and online? I think for OTB, I mean, it's obvious, but delays are good, random scans uh, are, are good, and to me, it's, it's a little bit like uh, airport security in the sense that you're not going to catch everything, but at least you make the players feel safer by having sort of a security presence. And what should the punishment be if you're caught cheating? <laughs> I think in terms of uh, punishment, it depends on the severity, but um, I think the reason why people don't really cheat like among the elite is that I think like if you're caught, you're just not going to be you're just not going to be invited back. I sort of wouldn't, wouldn't, I mean, this is like computer cheating, of course, specifically. Um, but uh, yeah, I generally think that's the way it should be, that, that you don't, yeah, you don't get a lot, lot, of, uh, lot of chances. So what role does um, psychology and like the psychological warfare play in the chess game for you? I think psychology plays a um, significant role for sure. Um, personally, I know that 
people, I mean, people play a little bit differently against me than they do against some others. Um, maybe like a little more passively, a little more apprehensively at times, even if it's just, even if it's uh, subconscious, I think they, yeah, I definitely when I play, I try to use the sort of psychological advantages that I, that I have, especially against players that I feel more likely to, um, to be sort of be bluffable. Um, I try and like push them a bit harder. Other players I might not, not try that, try that with. Uh, Bobby Fischer like famously said that I don't believe in psychology in chess, I believe in good moves. And I would say that I, I believe in both. What kind of psychology you can use against your opponent? I think opening preparation is definitely part of the psycholo psychological preparation. From the now from the World Rapid and Blitz Championship that I played, I played the uh, O'Kelly Sicilian A6, so move two against Yu Yang Yi. I did the same against Wesley in Toronto Finals, which uh, a game which I won, and I did that specifically against players whom I thought will not have sort of a sufficiently aggressive response to uh, a provocation in the opening. How about creativity and originality in your play? I feel like I'm winning games the same way that I was even back in 2009 when I won the World Blitz Championship for the first time. It's all, yeah, it's a lot of, lot of endgame strength and putting pressure, like willing my way to, to win. So um, I don't put a lot of eff emphasis on originality or, or creativity. For me, chess is, chess is a sport. Um, it's about getting, like, maximizing the chances of getting the results you want. And um, in, in that sense, um, you know, creativity is not, it's not high on my list of priorities. Besides, I don't think I'm a very creative person to begin with. Like, I rarely like come up with completely new ideas. I'm more the sort of person who, you know, picks up other ideas really, really well. Yeah, they used to, they used to say that about, about Anand as well, that uh, he would always play every new idea uh, the second time. <laughs> Because he picked up new things very, very quickly, uh, but um, he wouldn't necessarily invent them himself. How has Chess.com been as a partner for, for your vision? Chess.com has been, has been really good last, um, the last year. It's made my life um, a bit easier since things are um, sort of more, more centralized. They definitely have a lot of ideas and visions for, um, for the future, and many of them correspond um, pretty well with, uh, with mine. In what ways is Chess.com sort of helping to evolve the game, do you think? I think Chess.com has, um, has a great reach, um, obviously, and uh, they're also making the game faster and, and more fun. Is there a thing you think you would like them to do differently, or things they could do better? I think there are always things that can be uh, done uh, that done better production-wise and so on. But uh, you know that's really not not my um, my area. Another thing, though, that I, I think you know can be incorporated is um, fancy chess, uh, which um, I've been, been been working on lately. And uh, we will have fancy chess now for Title Tuesday events. This um, uh, this year, and uh, I think for uh, eventually for for a lot of other uh, tournaments as well. So I think there that's also some something that will make also chess.com experience even better. As a big uh, fantasy football player yourself, for those who don't play fantasy sports, what can they expect when they now get to play fantasy chess? I think fantasy chess will. Um, uh, you know, it, it will bring a different, different element. I think a lot of people like to watch sports and feel like they have a little bit on the line. Uh, and um, if you play fancy chess, you will sort of root for your um, pieces or players uh, to to perform. So you will have another another element uh, of of excitement there and another another bit of uh, content. What do you think about the job Fide is doing? You know, right now. 
One of the good things uh, about not playing the World Championship um, is that I've sort of, I sort of made sure that I don't have to be part of those discussions. Like it's not really, uh, it's not really up to me to tell Fido or whomever what to what to do. Um, so I think um, they they do what they do, but it's for me it's I'm mostly like independent of. Um, of, of that, mm. yeah. But if you were running FIDA, what would you do differently? Uh, then something seriously would have gone wrong with my life if I were to run <laughs> FIDA.